As I'm sure we all know by now, Sonic the Hedgehog is having quite the time in Hollywood. Despite being one of the largest gaming icons and icons period when it comes to kids entertainment, Sonic the Hedgehog never got any kind of movie really. Get out of here, you don't count! But don't get me wrong, it wasn't for a lack of trying. There are numerous cancelled Sonic the Hedgehog movies and versions of Sonic the Hedgehog movies that just simply never got off the ground. It's a me. Mario. And I definitely plan on covering those in a future video. It would take Sonic almost an entire 30 years to finally arrive on the big screen, and ever since then, it's been a complete and utter success. Not only this year are we coming up on a third Sonic the Hedgehog movie and a spin-off for Knuckles in his own TV show, this didn't only give Sonic a place in the film industry, this completely revitalized the entire Sonic franchise. But while we're now currently living in an era where Sonic the Hedgehog has his own movies in Hollywood that are coming in theaters and having spin-offs that are on TV, there was 30 years that went by where we didn't have a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, what was Sonic's role in Hollywood like around that time? That's a lot of time to not have any kind of movie presence, right? Well, you'd be right. Despite not having his own film, Sonic popped up in a lot of different movies as not only just an actual character in the films, but also references and easter eggs that call back to the franchise. So I thought today we would take a look at every single Sonic the Hedgehog movie cameo, dating all the way back to the early 1990s and today with the 2020s. So let's kick this off with the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie cameo, and one of the most interesting in the entire history of them. Before we get into that, I'd like to introduce today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, they deliver fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes straight to your doorstep. Cut the hours in a grocery store searching for some food for you and your family for dinner, and count on HelloFresh to make the cooking fun, simple, easy, and most importantly, affordable. All of that is why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Whether you're extremely busy at work or school, or your family are picky eaters, HelloFresh offers such a vast variety of foods that there's so much to choose from to where everyone's going to be satisfied. You can customize meals by swapping, upgrading, or even adding proteins and sides with calorie smart or carb smart options. And even if you're not the best cook in the world, or you don't know how to cook that well, there's some quick and easy step recipes that'll have your food ready in less than 30 minutes and bursting with flavor. HelloFresh sources ingredients from the farm to your doorstep in less than a week, ensuring that you always receive fresh fresh, high quality produce. Cooking with fresh ingredients not only tastes better, but it can also provide you with more nutrients and a better overall eating experience. But if you do enjoy snacking, HelloFresh has you covered with a range of snacks, sides, desserts, and more from the HelloFresh market. Simply add those to your weekly order and they'll arrive alongside your meals. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for HelloFresh today for less stressing and more savoring meals. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Go to my link in the description or use my code HOGHF132360 to receive 16 free meals and a free dessert for life while subscription is active. Wayne's World. Wayne's World is a 1992 comedy film starring Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. They play a pair of rock and heavy metal fans who have their own public access television series, all based around an SNL skit that exploded in popularity around the time. So popular that it got its own movie that is now considered a classic in the world of comedy films. So just imagine like Skibbity Toilet, but Skibbity Toilet got a movie. I'm actually not ruling out the possibility. So you might be saying, how is there a Sonic cameo in this movie if you do the math? This came out in 1992, and this surely had to have filmed in at least 1991. Well, you're not too crazy for thinking that, because there is a Sonic cameo in this, like we mentioned. But it may not be what you think, because this clearly had a much larger tie to Sega internally than a lot of other Sonic movie cameos. The movie quite literally starts off with a commercial for the first ever Sonic the Hedgehog video game. But this isn't just any casual footage. This is prototype gameplay of Sonic the Hedgehog. You can see right here all these floating UFOs that were previously seen in the prototypes of the games. While not too much is known about the relationship between Sega and Wayne's World, it's very clear that this is just product placement. Sega wanted a way of promoting their brand new Sonic the Hedgehog character and franchise and mascot, so knowing that Wayne's World was going to be a surefire hit, and that aims towards the demographic that not only Sonic but the Sega Genesis was going for, it was a smart move. Providing them with early footage of Sonic the Hedgehog for it to release the following year after the first game came out, big brain stuff, but you'll have to be an eagle eye viewer to notice that it is Sonic. As you can't really see him beyond the life counter down there, but if you know the rings and the score system, then it's obviously Sonic, as you can even see levels in the background like Marvel Zone. With this era of Sonic being so much a product of the 90s, I think it's very fitting that his first ever movie cameo was in Wayne's World, which I feel fits that description as well. Hocus Pocus. This one is far more well known. Hocus Pocus was released the following year after Wayne's World in 1993, and is also a comedy film. Although the Disney produced feature didn't really do that well at the box office or with critics initially, it's gone on to become a cult classic in the world of Halloween movies, and yes, Sonic the Hedgehog does pop up. Being Halloween, 
obviously, kids are gonna dress up in costumes. And with Sonic being incredibly hot around this time, that was a poor choice of words, you can see this little kid right here dressed up in this Sonic the Hedgehog getup. He's got the face paint and everything, kid went all out. What I don't know though is if this is an officially licensed costume. I should probably know this as a collector who's been hunting down vintage Sonic the Hedgehog merchandise for years, but upon further research, this seemed to be the Sonic costume for kids in that era, and that does not match what's going on here. I don't know, maybe some 90s kids can give some further context, and maybe this was a real thing, but it seems that this thing was originally made for Hocus Pocus, so they could get some kind of Sonic costume in there. Regardless though, that's two back-to-back -back years with Sonic movie cameos, but we'd have to wait a little longer for the next one. Jingle All The Way. Jingle All The Way is a 1996 Christmas comedy, I'm noticing a trend here, starring the one and only Arnold, who promises to get his son Jamie the hottest toy of the season, Turbo Man. But he waited until Christmas Eve to start caring about his son, so he has to go hunt this thing down as it's particularly sold out. This being the Christmas season though, parades are bound to happen in big cities. And in a few shots of the parade, we can see a bunch of mascot costumes, including Ernie, Hello Kitty, the blue Crayola Crayon, and Sonic the Hedgehog. This was indeed the Sonic mascot costume they were using around this time, and while this specific costume or anything with Sonic doesn't really happen in this movie, it was still cool to see regardless. Rebirth of Mothra 3. Yeah guys, when I was researching this one, I audibly said to myself, what the f the Rebirth of Mothra 3 is a Japanese film that was released in 1998. I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know what this is, I don't know what the hell this thing is either. This thing only released theatrically in Japan in 1998, it didn't see its way to the states until 2003, where it aired on the Sci-Fi channel. So for everybody crying and peeing their pants right now because they didn't know Sonic ties into this, don't worry, it's not your fault. So you might be asking, well Ricardo, how does Sonic tie into this? Well, it's very small. This will be the first time that we see Sonic the Hedgehog merchandise is the way of cameos, as we can see a Tails plush in Mr. Sonoda's truck, right at the beginning of the film, and then afterwards we can see a Sonic plush that counterparts with Tails in their dining room. I know this one was incredibly obscure, and the cameos weren't that crazy, but I had to mention it. Master Q, Incredible Pet Detective. We have another obscure Japanese film, this one being animated. Guys, there's not even a wiki page for this thing, I know little to nothing about this movie. Outside of this guy's name being Master Q and being a pet detective, I don't know what this movie is about who this man is, but what I do know is that Sonic does make a cameo along with Tails, Knuckles, and Cream in the form of a Sonic Advance 2 poster, so that's cool. I just wish I knew what this movie was. If you like the look of this, it's on YouTube right now for free. But with that out of the way, let's move on to a movie that you guys might actually know. Hitch. Something about Sonic just likes popping up in comedies, I guess. Well, this one's a romantic comedy. Hitch was released in 2005, and like I said, it's a romantic comedy starring none other than Will Smith. <laughs> oh, wow! Very similar to a lot of the previous ones that we discussed, this is just another background cameo, with the Sonic the Hedgehog Popsicle making a debut. He's alongside a handful of other characters like Mario and Dora and Tweety Bird. Nothing too crazy, but if you're an eagle eye viewer, you will see it. Drillbit Taylor, Budget Bodyguard. Drillbit Taylor is a 2008 American coming-of-age comedy film starring none other but Lightning McQueen himself, Owen Wilson. If you guys couldn't tell already, almost a majority, if not all, of these cameos have been kind of background things, a lot with merchandise popping up in the background of something or a costume. Nothing very in your face, and that's no different here. This this is our first Knuckles cameo though, as we have the Toy Island Knuckles figure, the larger one, sitting right there in the background. It does make me question how they got this thing, is this released in 2008, so that means they must have filmed sometime between 2007 or 2006 at the earliest. And these things weren't the easiest to come by. I'm not gonna question it though, the set decorator was cooking. But enough with that. Let's move on to the next decade, and probably all of the movies you were here for and actually know about. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I'm sure all of you know what Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is, it's one of the most iconic comedy films of the past few years. Directed by the amazing Edgar Wright and starring Michael Sarah. the film follows Scott who's trying to get a record deal while battling seven of the evil exes of his new girlfriend, Ramona Flowers. And if you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It's like an essential of our generation. And of course, there are references to Sonic in it, and probably some of the most overt yet. Sonic was around for basically 20 years at this point. The franchise has been cemented as iconic, so numerous of Sonic's iconic sound effects are used in the movie. I should state, it's not just Sonic sound effects that are used, a bunch of different video game sound effects are in this movie as well, but there are a handful of Sonic ones, including the ring being collected, the warping to the special stage, the spin dash sound effect, the final result sound effect. While we don't see Sonic the Hedgehog himself, I feel like this is actually the most rewarding Sonic cameo or reference so far. And spoiler alert, the new Scott Pilgrim animated series has much more overt references to Sonic the Hedgehog that dive into the character and mention him by name and even becomes a running joke during the show. I plan on talking about that when we eventually do Sonic TV show cameos, which is just as, if not more extensive. But this is still cool 
nonetheless. Wreck-It Ralph. I'm positive this is the one you've all been waiting for. The history behind this cameo is really extensive and really interesting. If you guys don't know, Disney's Wreck-It Ralph was released in 2012 and is amazing. It's one of the most iconic animated films of the past 10 years. Wait, this came out in 2012, it's been over 10 years, oh my god. I remember being obsessed with this film to the point where I think I saw it five times in theaters as a kid. I'm sure if you asked me back then, I would have said it was my favorite movie. And it wasn't even just because Sonic makes cameos in it, no. It's just a really good film as a whole, and I still think it holds up to this day. This is the first film where Sonic's like an actual living, breathing character in the film. He doesn't just pop up in the background of something that's live action in the form of merchandise or a cameo with like a costume. This man was such a part of it, he was on the poster. I remember going to the theater and seeing a giant standee for this and asking if I could have it. That wasn't allowed. But it's not just Sonic who pops up in this, Dr. Eggman does as well, and while he's on voice by Mike Pollock or has any speaking lines, it's really great to see him part of that little villain therapy group. And in time lapse of the arcade, you can see that Sonic the Fighters is there, which is great, because if you're gonna have any Sonic arcade game there, that's the one you should get. I think we all know the most iconic cameo, and that's Sonic's little PSA towards the beginning of the movie. It's definitely supposed to be some kind of reference to Sonic Says from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. While it's not verbatim or anything like that, I definitely know they took inspiration from that specific show. Sonic pops up again at Fix It Felix Jr.'s party. Try saying that 10 times fast. Also in Tapper's Bar, you can see a bunch of different headshots of different characters there, like Sonic and also Tails and Dr. Eggman as well. He also pops up in a handful of the background shots, including one where he actually loses his rings. Sonic also appears at Felix's and Calhoun's wedding. Look at him just sitting there. The end credits of the movie even have Sonic going through a chemical plant with Ralph. It's awesome. And yeah, those are really all the Sonic cameos in the movie. It's not like the most in the world, but it's still really great to see. In the best that we've seen to this date. I still think so many people remember this movie for its Sonic cameos. He's definitely the largest profile character that's there that has a decent role in the movie. But we're not done with the Wreck-It Ralph universe just yet, but before we get to the next one, let's talk about another movie real quick. Ready Player One. Ready Player One is directed by Steven Spielberg and it's based off the infamous novel and okay, I'm not gonna front, I hate this movie. I understand though, we're not here to talk about my personal opinion on films. Just know, I don't like this movie, but it does have Sonic in it, so it gets some points from me. And back to back movies, this is another film that features Sonic as an actual character in it. Kind of. Sonic pops up in the background of one particular shot and also the final battle where you can see him doing a homing attack. The difference here compared to Wreck-It Ralph though is that since this is set in some kind of virtual reality, Sonic is really just somebody's avatar. It's not like Sonic the Hedgehog himself. But you know, it looks like him a decent amount I guess. But if we're being completely real, while he doesn't talk or anything or have a large role in the film, this is probably the second best one we have to Wreck-It Ralph. Not quality of the film wise, I'll take Wayne's World over this any day. The cameo wise, I'll take this over Toil and Knuckles any day. Ralph breaks the internet. In my script I had written down okay bad movie intermission over with but I completely forgot that this movie is also really bad. Released the same year as Ready Player One, that's right we got two Sonic cameos in the same year. And while not as many different cameos as Wreck-It Ralph, I'd say quality wise I like these in here much more. Sonic actually gets two different speaking lines where he gets to talk to actual characters. The first being Sonic telling Ralph about the internet. And I feel like if you're gonna get any video game character to tell Ralph about the internet, Sonic is the objective right answer. Not just that but Ralph also mentions Sonic by name once when they enter the internet, and you can see Dr. Eggman in the back of the same shot. Why they're not throwing hands, I don't know. We can see that Sonic artwork in the back of Tapper's bar again, and I didn't mention it, but this has to be based off of Sonic X, right? It looks just like it. And my personal favorite, Sonic is part of Zangief's book club. Look, the PSA is iconic, that's the first time we got to see the Sonic the Hedgehog character properly on the big screen. But these two, I just feel are more cute and fun and fitting towards the Sonic characters, I like these a lot. While I might not love Ralph Breaks the Internet, these two moments do sound satisfy me as a Sonic fan. Guns Akimbo. This one's gonna be really short, but it's still a cool one. Have you ever seen this meme floating around? Well, it's from this movie, Guns Akimbo. Starring none other than Harry Potter himself, the film released the following year after Ralph Breaks the Internet in 2019. While he's distracted on his phone, he bumps into someone and his imagination depicts them losing rings. Nothing too wild, but it seems like once when we hit the 2010s, all of these references got way better than the other movies. And this next one is no different as it set the internet ablaze. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I love those Wreck-It Ralph cameos, but this one is different. I remember when the news broke that this was going to happen like a few days before the movie. It was insane. We didn't know anything about this. Not just that, it wasn't just Sonic popping up in the movie. It was Ugly Sonic from the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer. He's voiced by Tim Robinson and honestly has the largest role out of any Sonic cameo in any movie. He pops up numerous times, is referenced numerous times, and even saves the day at the end of the film. You might be asking how this was allowed to happen. I mean, this is a Disney movie and they're completely crap 
crapping on this version of the character. Well, thanks to parody law, this was allowed to slide, as so many other characters are in this movie that Disney doesn't have ownership of. But this one is golden. I know this one was kind of dividing the fan base a bit. Some people found it funny. Some people found it disrespectful to the character and kind of felt that this could have hurt the brand. I don't know, man. I like fun. I think this is really entertaining and funny. I treat this as closure, really, for the ugly Sonic era we had as a fan base. That's since been fixed and is long in the past and isn't going to affect our future. So I think this was a really fun cameo and I'm glad that we have it. And honestly, I don't think too many people talk about this enough nowadays. Transformers Rise of the Beasts. For our final cameo slash reference of the day, we have the latest one that came out last year in the newest Transformers installment, and this one makes a lot of sense. If you guys didn't know, the Transformers films are produced by Paramount, the same distributors as the Sonic the Hedgehog films. So it makes sense they're going to want to prop up some of their biggest franchises, and since it's impossible to have a Sonic Transformers crossover, they might as well reference them in each other's films. In order to conceal their identities on the radio, Chris Diaz assigns the codename of Sonic to his older brother Noah, Knuckles to Mirage, and Tails to himself. It's nothing crazy, but with this film taking place in the 90s, I thought this was a really cool reference, and just straight up saying Sonic characters' names in terms of pop culture references is just so nice to see. The franchise is relevant enough to be at that space. But with that, that is our final Sonic movie cameo. It's been an interesting ride to say the least. While we have our own Sonic the Hedgehog movies nowadays, it's cool to look back at where we were before then. It started off kind of rough with nothing too crazy going on, but it seems like once we hit the 2010s, all these cameos and references got really cool. I'm sure this isn't the last of the Sonic cameos we've seen in movies. There's so many more films to come that I'm sure are going to have Sonic referenced or cameo in them as the franchise continues to grow in popularity and respect. But until then, we have a very particular movie that we have to look forward to this year. But before we get that, we have a Knuckles TV show coming out of that universe, and well, Sonic has a long history on TV himself, but not just that, TV cameos and references. So I'll be seeing you guys shortly with that one, but until then. Oh, I forgot there's a Sonic Boom toy in Dive Room would be good too. <laughs> Out the dark. I know everything I wanted to find away.